This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 396. I am just a few away from episode 400 here coming up in just under a month, I guess. Uh, but uh, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, where it's very, very sunny. As we get to this half of the year and we lead towards the, the longest day of summer, we're realizing how many, how, how many minutes we're going to have to keep knocking the show back to make sure there's not sun in, our, in everybody's faces on the couch, but there's still it's still it's still over there a little bit. Of course, we got Katie Dudas <laughs> with us, just 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 working on her even, tan. I don't even know what to do with my face. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where does my face go? Yeah, what's in this? my face doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> so audio, there is yeah, there's a little bit of sun still coming in, and we'll be for the next like probably five minutes. But Katie Dudas is here, Hi. suffering through it with us. <laughs> <laughs> She's the uh, director of marketing and sales over at the Scare House, Scare House. representing, and uh, also also hosting a stage this weekend at Millville Music. Yes, Fest. I am. Yes, <laughs> watch me mispronounce bands terribly. I can't wait. <laughs> is it the metal band? The I'm metal stage? Because then it's, it's going to be like, welcome, we welcome death baby something. Kumlots. <laughs> Kumlots. Kumlots. <laughs> So many umlauts. <laughs> also with us, he's the uh, gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire and new Fortnite addict <laughs> John Chichilla is joining us. Yes, I'm gonna have to start. A, I'm gonna have to join a, a recovery group. And I find if I hold my face just in this exact position and only move my eyes Wait, to look around, nice. there you go. There you go. I, 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 I'm in a perfect spot where I'm not blinded <laughs> by the light. Blinded by the light. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's a, it came into my head too. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 I didn't mention. I wanted to mention this off air, but somebody had a Jarvis is my co-pilot uh, T-shirt walking by yesterday. Ah. Uh, so, so it, I, 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 I almost wanted to be like, watch the awesome cast. <laughs> but, but I was, I felt like I was already creepy uh, complimenting her shirt. So, uh, also with us on the line, she is uh, from Shift Collaboratives. We were talking about some of you guys in the news uh, here recently. Cynthia Clossy is joining us from the home base. Well, hi. Welcome. How you been doing? Pretty groovy, pretty groovy. Living, uh, enjoying life out here in the east end of the Pittsburgh space. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, I've been enjoying the Indian barbecue on your end of town lately. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, awesome. But uh, of course, uh, this is the Awesome Cast. Uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com and uh, including past episodes and awesome chats that we have uh, here and there. Uh, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Music Podcast, and the video versions on the uh, YouTube and Facebook page for Awesome Cast. And of course, we are also. Uh, throwing those episodes over on the Sorgatron Media Twitch page and doing a lot of streams. You can catch up with a lot of the uh, stuff, at least that the stuff that has video components that we have on the network, like Comic Book Pit when they record uh, the Raw Feed and Fishing Without Bait and Wrestling Mayhem Show and Thrifty, the newest on the uh, on the uh, uh, network as well. Uh, so go check that out. Subscribe to that and uh, and 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 you know, open up some, some new audiences over there. Tweet us at AwesomeCast, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com if you want to hit us on the uh, email. And, of course, please join the AwesomeCast Facebook group where there's a lot of discussion and a lot of the stories get shared throughout the week. It's kind of my personal bookmarker to see if there's any comments on any of this stuff leading into the show. And, of course, we get some contributions from other people as well. Uh, and, of course, if uh, you want to be part of the studio audience, audience hit us up on that email or uh, Twitter or, or anything like that. And uh, we'll save a seat for you. Definitely encouraging some in -studio studio audiences and uh thank you to our our pa patreon supporters at the coffee club five dollar level matt weller and at the fan of the show one dollar level mike fedor uh michael fedor show i'm sorry mike fedor show 
on the Twitter uh, for him. Uh, so thank you so much to those guys. And uh, you guys can support the show too. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. Give as little as a dollar a month if you like it. Um, and... And we might have some uh, stuff coming up here very soon. I know we're unveiling something with the Mayhem Show Patreon, and we might do something next week as well uh, with that for some giveaways for you guys. Uh, so let's get into our awesome thing of the week. And, and I, I guess, since we already mentioned it at the top of the show, I guess Fortnite is kind of the thing this week um, uh, on a few things. One, Chilla, uh, we, we exposed Chilla to it. Uh, about a half an hour ago. <laughs> it's like I've been infected. Yeah, it, it, it kind of is, right? Because it's infectious, guys. Um, my my, my straight-up awesome thing of the week is, yeah, yeah. there's season four of Fortnite has come out since uh, since our last episode. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's some other stuff going on with Fortnite, but the, 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 the coolest thing is definitely Thanos dancing is the greatest thing right now in Fortnite. Um, if you don't know Fortnite, there's a lot of these uh, kind of gestures you can do, including these dance moves. And um, and I think that's the one that I, I had pointed out, too. Uh, so, you know, badass Thanos from uh, Infinity War, who, you know, murders like hundreds and hundreds of people, no spoiler there, um, um, just just getting jiggy with it. Uh, <laughs> and we were seeing some of that in the videos, Chill, I know, because we were watching just like somebody that like stayed up all night until like the the um, the update came up at like 5.30 in the morning and they were trying to figure out the gameplay. They, this Fortnite crossover, if you don't know, it's like a 100 person, like, you know, player versus player and the map gets gets smaller and now you can find the Infinity Gauntlet and you turn into Thanos. It's really awesome. <laughs> like, there's a meteor that comes down, so everybody sees where it comes down, and they all just, like, the hundred players in the game descend on it and are killing each other to try to get this. And it looked like it was a ton of fun. And the weapons, like, look ridiculous. His weapon looks ridiculous. It's like the laser beam type thing. It can mm -hmm. hit you from a huge distance. As, can... a, as a new player to the game, I mean, just getting around and finding a weapon that you weren't just wielding your hammer. Mm -hmm. Um was enough to keep me going for a little while to have to have that to wield that type of power <laughs> um, could you imagine you're like a first time player <laughs> and you just happen to be in the right spot where the infinity gauntlet lands and you're just like oh this is the greatest thing ever why is this game so easy uh <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was a really cool crossover, and there's been like cool things in here, like you can get an outfit to be like John Wick and things that kind of look like Star Lord and everything. But this is the first, I think, official like I suppose sponsored thing that Marvel, uh, you know, has had in like that, right? Well, and I'm hoping it's not for just a limited time. I'm hoping they let all this stuff stay, mm -hmm. and it's not just like oh, for this next month you're gonna get this. This cool is definitely piece. a special mode. Mm -hmm. Like when they have things like costumes, it's something that sticks around. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, that, that's a little bit of a consideration there, too. But I mean, it's just, you know, these guys are, are continually, you know, <laughs> completely being awesome with, uh, um, you know, so, somebody I was listening to Unlimited Lives podcast and they talked about that when the season four update came up, they there was a story about it in the local news, like the five o'clock news or whatever. Right. Uh, that's that's crazy mm -hmm. that it's on that level and it's that popular. Um, but but the other thing that kind of goes along with it is in this new ver in this new season they also had a contest to add dance moves and this this um, one player didn't win um, just this kid that that was like you know everywhere with his dance move and let's see if I can pull it up real quick orange shirt kid uh, kid underscore Fortnite twelve um, apparently the Fortnite community got behind him and and you know, really petitioned beyond the contest to get this kid's dance move included. And actually, I think that's the dance move that Thanos is doing yeah. in the gift that I shared today, too. Like the wobbly arm. Yeah, thing. the wobbly arm kind of situation. Does that dance move have a name? Um, I think it's Orange Shirt Kid move now. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but how, no. How do you, how do you, so do they, do you just video self, video yourself yeah, with yeah. the move and then they incorporate it? Or I mean, yeah, they'll, 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 if they like it and it wins, it, it's one that they incorporate in. It's one that you can either purchase or you get it when you like have the battle pass and you level up to a certain amount. And that's how you kind of collect. Like if we were watching the video, like that guy had a full screen of moves that he could select. I have two. 
because I haven't put any money in this. Sometimes two is all you need. Sometimes two is all you need. I can salute and I can do this like kind of clap, like kind of like Carlton kind of situation, like get my get my shoulders moving. Uh, so or anything that came free with like hooking you up to Twitch Prime. So um, yeah, so uh, season four, I'm further enticed to still drop like ten bucks on this game for the season because I think I'm playing. It's like it's at that Pokemon Go level where I put enough time into this. It, they they've kind of deserved my money. <laughs> you know, I don't feel like I'm being ripped off in this. Like all those games I deleted a couple months ago. Uh, so, so yeah, the Fortnite this is going to be the perfect thing for me uh, this week when I'm traveling and in my hotel room for doing uh, looking for things to do. So, as the noob, um, mm-hmm. how does so what happens between seasons? Do like I lose stuff? No, you. Any, is it just anything something you, resets? It, it, it's it it resets where you are. Like it resets your levels to one. And you keep all the stuff you earned. Okay. So all the suits and everything like that, uh, you know, other than like like you know XP bonuses and things like that, you keep all that stuff that you've earned. And now it's kind of like a badge of well, I earned this in season three, and people nobody in season four can get that. Oh, so there's like new dance moves. Right. There's new dance moves. And there's the old new ones outfits. that you could have earned are now. Yes. You either earn them or they're gone. I'm guessing they're probably going to be in the store too. If you wanted to buy those things, okay, but you know it's a kind of that incentive to to kind of stay with it too. Or in like season forty three, there'll be like a throwback pack. Yeah. It'll be all the dance moves. Sure, from season two. Sure, yeah, you never know. So and and we'll see how long like this thing goes before you know that keeps people's interest. Do you guys remember this would be back? Oh my gosh, like two thousand three, two thousand four. Um, when there was like an ad campaign where there was a chicken and you could like talk to the chicken on, it was not a chicken. It was a person in a chicken suit and you could like tell them to do things. Do you remember this at all? That was was a KFC thing, wasn't it? I mean, was it KFC? It could have been. It was like, uh, it was, it was like, um, Crispin, uh, I wish I'd been thinking about it before. Crispin Glover? no, no, no. The name of the ad agency that did it was uh, like their their first, you know, I should know my ad agencies and I don't. But so there was this thing where you could this and this is like early 2000s. You could like somehow command the chicken to do things. And then like they didn't, of course, think through all of the like community involvement piece. And <laughs> yeah. the chicken was doing like not nice things is for it, a little bit. Does that it, ring a bell with anybody? Was it, was it online? Like, where did you see the chicken? Was it on like a on the Internet? This was on the web. Webs in the day. Was it oh. <laughs> subservient chicken yes. from Burger King? Yes. yes. Oh. yes. I just found an Adweek article from like 2005 on this. Subservient chicken. Yes, that's what it was. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the article in here because there's an article where they're dissecting. The, the title is "Dissecting Subservient Chicken," which I mean, if you weren't in the ad kind of realm, it, that sounds a little weird. Uh, but exactly. no. Like for everyone in the world, that was weird. I mean, even in the ad industry, that was a crazy. Oh, piece I of remember life. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had this this ad thing, and it was like a big creepy ass chicken yes. that kept sneaking up on this guy. And and let's see, let's see if we can go to the website. Yeah, there's a website, and there was like kind of a a animated gif kind of video thing yeah it would play because it looks like a 2002 era webcam where it's like five frames a second or something like that right um, so, so they had like all of these like actual regular television ads but then they had this like this thing that you're showing right there and you could tell the chicken to do things and that's what this Thanos thing in some way reminds me of or you know you you send in your dance move but uh, just a weird echo of of that early early yeah like like do the hokey pokey there's hula dancing there's things like that um wow like even this all the time understandably i guess they're actually this is 2004 um and this is um uh some some youtube uh video na- uh, uh, uh channel called b60 and uh subservient so chicken 2004 is arguably the first successful case of viral marketing and now the chicken is back i i guess they had uh kind of brought them back a little bit um, for like maybe a sub campaign or something in 2014, actually. Huh, I don't so, cool. so th- throw throw back throw back yeah. viral campaigns. How about that? Uh, <laughs> subservient chicken redemption. The other side of the road. Oh no! 
<laughs> that 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 would take us down a rabbit hole, I'm sure. Um, all right, I want to say with the video games for just a moment. The video gamings, yes, for just a moment. Uh, Chilla, you were thinking, keeping an eye on what's going on with the Switch over there, right? So I, I was surprised. I saw an article, and it actually was, I think, in like Forbes on Forbes.com this morning, and it was Nintendo Switch won't have a virtual console, and and in, in gadget picked up the same the same title heading which i was like oh man really we're not getting we're not getting a virtual console like some of the other systems did um where i could play my old nintendo super nintendo whatever games i wanted to play um so the fact of the matter is no you're not getting a virtual console for the nintendo switch but as part of an announcement of their online service which only costs you twenty dollars well it's twenty dollars a year you can actually do four dollars a month eight dollars for three months twenty dollars for the year or I think it was like $35 for a family of eight. So if anyone wants to split a Switch account, let Jeez. me know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it gives you it gives you the online play. So things like Mario Kart that you can play online for free now. Well, yeah. You're going to have to start paying for it. They're turning it into, into the free. The, the, and this is the first time they've done a pay service, isn't it? As far as I know, yes. But part of the pay service is they're kicking it off with 20 free... I guess it's not really free, but 20 games Mm -hmm. that they're going to launch at the same time they're launching the online service. And they're they're for the most part, other than like Super Mario 3 and Zelda, like they're like like first generation NES games, right? Like Donkey Kong, tennis, soccer, so balloon fight, ice climber. Uh, So I mean, it's it's a good mix of games and really representative of like you know their first big big ones. But what I thought was cool was the ones that are two player, they're going to be revamping for online competitive or cooperative multiplayer. Nice. So if you think about Mario, I think it kind of makes sense to bring Mario Brothers, the original. And the only one I see here that's not like a two player game is probably Legend of Zelda. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that's just based on massive demand. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm pretty excited about this. For the the other thing they're adding at the same time is they're going to be adding cloud saves. So right now your game saves local, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but if your Nintendo Switch is it gets broken, all of your save data is because it was matched to that like device ID. Device, I, th- I think yeah. the Wii U had a similar issue, didn't it? I, that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that I'm super super excited for this and. Right now, uh, what's coming out? So Mega Man's coming out soon, so that'll tide oh, me over till nice. all these games come out. Nice. That's good to see that coming together. And, and once again, enticing me. I actually dusted off my Game Boy Advance and played some uh, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle like from the original Game Boy last night mm-hmm. as I was not, not falling asleep. Um, yeah, it, it's it's, it's kind of nice to be able to throw back to those. Or, or maybe I won't need this because I'll just be still playing Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, that too. <laughs> Yeah, you know, as you're download, figuring out how, how how many of your platforms you can download it to. So, uh, Cindy, what is your awesome thing of the week? So I had um, seen this uh, hashtag on on the on Twitter called "predictively funny." Uh, I um, tried predictive text on my phone and did not find it useful, which, you know, I mean, there's so much going on right now with machine learning and artificial intelligence and um, just all sorts of things. But I found like predictive text was more harm than help. And so this is the first predictive text thing that I think has any value whatsoever. So the idea is you write a short monologue, like a, like the speech that someone would give, you know, to be or not to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you write, a, you just do some predictive text. So you get a little speech and then you either you read it out or you, you know, you pass it on to, you know, you assign it to a friend or something like that. And then they read it out in a dramatic fashion. It's hilarious. I mean, it's it maybe it speaks more to people who, uh, you know, the the theater, um, the theater geeks amongst us. uh, But, you know, the, the. it, it, the the weird kind of dialogues or the really weird kind of monologues, people turn them into, and there aren't that many of them now. So I'm I'm seeing this as like a, a trend at least. I'm hoping it will be. Maybe I'm encouraging all of you. Um, mm-hmm. But you can. They're really funny. They're really fun. Mm-hmm. I, I I got the one here, and I'll pull it up here. I'm sorry, Cindy, you're not going to be able to hear this along with. But this is the one that you had included mm-hmm. in here. If I have this right, they're really funny. They're really Oop. fun. Nope, that's you. <laughs> Hold on. There it is. Nope. Nope. Yes. 
I don't know why I'm going to get audio from Twitter. That's because I need to mute the site. That's why. I'm not sure how much you want me to tell him. <laughs> you don't have anything else for that reason. You can want me. So she's just doing like a dramatic okay. reading of it? That's right. I think we caught it right in the middle of it. It's very serious. It, it's kind of weird because her... I'm sorry, but you the, didn't know me and you wouldn't want to. The, the one link is predictive text by Mrs. Mrs. Chilla. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that was actually, when I first saw it, I thought, what? And, and so that was, that's an extra bonus for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, check out that hashtag, predictively funny. There's a few of those there. And maybe we should all uh, uh, try to do one <laughs> mm-hmm. in the next week. So uh, go check that out on the Twitters. Katie, what's your awesome thing? Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of Google, Google Maps. I've always been a big fan of Google Maps, and uh, they've announced some things. Uh, walking navigation is one of the things. So if you're walking, it's AR. So you're able to see the little yeah. arrows and things where you're going. Yeah, that was the big thing they were talking about yeah. today. Was that like if you get like you know out from a subway and you don't know which way yeah. to go, you actually pull up the AR and it points the right the right direction. for you. Because sometimes you have that moment where you're like, okay, where which way am I? Where am I at? You know, which way am I going? I'm like, that's perfect. Plus, plus, it's nice because you're able to just see it and not have to figure out where you're going. Um, something else I think was really cool is the For You recommendations, restaurants and things. They'll kind of give you suggestions based on other things that maybe um, you've liked or you've, I'm sure, like if, if you put in, you're like, I love this restaurant. And you're like, well, since you love Slice on Broadway in Beachview, you should try the Slice on Broadway. <laughs> it's going to recommend every pizza. <laughs> it's going to recommend every pizza place everywhere that I'm at, basically. Yes. Um, it's just like every, it. here's all the pizza in Chinese places, um, you know, in, in, in Michigan. I was like, oh, thanks. Thanks, because I couldn't find those anywhere. But here, if you want to make pran- plan- 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 plans with your friends, yes. uh, essentially you kind of long press on a restaurant and add it to a short list that you share with your friends. Once you share it, your friends can add additional suggestions to the list or vote on the place they'd like to visit for a group activity. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Then everybody picks a different restaurant. Everybody picks Everyone a different Everyone picks a slice. different slice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is nothing but a slice ad. <laughs> but yeah, they also um, made some improvements to Google Lens, which I thought mm-hmm. was kind of cool. And uh, I like the little shopping thing because we've seen eBay do, do that where you take a photo of an item and eBay says, oh, here, this, here is this item. I found it here. Now you can buy it. So now you can do that through Google Lens. And it actually kind of works. <laughs> I probably use a lot of Google Express kind of situation there. Mm-hmm. The, the one thing that I thought was super impressive about Google Lens was its ability to let you copy and paste text off of like in motion, like, uh, like you're just sitting here and I'm looking at the the side of the slice on, on Broadway box. And I would be able to just click and drag and grab Beachview PNC Park Carnegie right off the side of the box, which I, I'm not a hundred percent sure how, while I think this is really, really cool. I feel like, Oh, I could just walk behind someone and snap a picture and grab all of the text off their computer. <laughs> like yeah, the, the yeah. other the other abilities for this technology kind of make me hmm, like. And that was a theme of the discussions I heard from a lot of things happening from Google I/O today, right? Uh, and I want to touch on those, but I think at first we need to lead into a slice ad uh, <laughs> uh but no i think yeah, there's a lot of fun there and definitely maps is one of the things that intrigued me as well i want to touch on those but first i want to give a shout out to our friend slice on broadway that we can vote on which one we want to go to we can uh, uh decide what's which piece of place we want to go as long as it's slice on broadway uh for the awesome cast uh but uh and actually it was cool our pizza tonight was actually uh cooked by rico himself the owner of Whoa. uh of uh, uh, Slice on Broadway. So it was cool to see uh, him hanging out in there. Again, right up here at the OG location. I know he's been busy with the newest location out there on the East End, on Cynthia's yeah. Way. Have you, yeah. been, have you been yet? Oh, absolutely, yes. Excellent. And it's, it's a complete delight and uh, wonderful um, place to visit. Come, come grab a pizza and visit us at work. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah they're like a block away from you, aren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so grab some Slice. I gr- grab every a, day if you if you want to know you're definitely going to be welcome at shift collaborative make sure you grab a slice uh a, a pizza and just bring it with you uh you know 
and uh, and, and and have an afternoon over there on the East End. Uh, but no, uh, uh, four locations, including the East End, here in Beachview, right on the Broadway Avenue, up the street from us here at the studio, as well as uh, over at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Carnegie PA on Main Street. Uh, thank you so much for Slice on Broadway for supporting po- Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni, pepperoni pizza for so long, so much of our upcoming eight year anniversary uh, here of the awesome cast has been uh, supported by Slice on Broadway, and we really do appreciate. It. Check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, pgh underscore slice on the Twitter. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, go IO. It, it was actually a little bit of dueling um, um, conferences this week between Microsoft Build and IO. IO, I think all around, I think is the most interesting probably. Uh, and the ones that kind of affect the conversations that we have on this show, including what you were saying about maps and 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 like kind of the the um, the uh, lenses kind of situation as well. And they already translate lens already like does Google Translate you know for when I'm looking at stuff from like you know the Mexican uh, store across the street, right? Mm-hmm. So now I can copy and paste that and and figure things out from there even further, right? Yeah, it, I was I, I was super interested in this the, the only thing that surprises me about lens is it's not available on all devices mm-hmm. um like i can't even get it on the the galaxy um note device so kind of bummed me out about that but hopefully they they bring it to more devices and they also stated that they're going to be adding they're going to give care or vendors the option to include it in their stock camera the capabilities in their stock camera app i'll be interested to see if samsung tapes takes them up on that because they have bixby and everything else integrated Mm -hmm. but i i don't know the the smart text real world or smart text search the real world copy paste i'm not huge on the clothing and decor recognition and search but um okay if you're into that and then the real time search i thought was pretty neat awesome um i was impressed either the, you know kind of off, off the top i was impressed by waymo and i don't know how realistic it is that they're doing like active hands-free um drives for people like there was a story about a woman that had um uh she was in an accident young and and never got her driver's license because it scared her out of driving so now they were like having her use like a waymo car to get to work every day like, like that's cool. en- enabling things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of impressive. And, and, you know, if it's something like a commute to work, then it's something that's obviously a very probably predictive path. Right. And they're supposed to be rolling out uh, a system in Phoenix um, around these as well. It's, it's kind of surprised that they're that far along, not, not persistent that they can roll these out anywhere, but at least in these, these situations where, and, and again, I don't think these cars even have um, steering steering wheels. I haven't. I from have the, not seen the one video? of their one of their cars. Yeah, from the videos they were showing, I don't think so. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I, I'm interested to see if there's any Waymo people. I'm going to ask a lot of questions if I see Waymo at the uh, West Coast Baja event this year. I, we're going to be in Portland, so I don't know if they'll be up that far. Uh, but I would see them like out at the uh, SoCal events uh, last year. So it'll be interesting. Um, Android P. Hey, I thought it was interesting. Their beta was rolling out to multiple devices, none Samsung. Samsung could because they do the GUI over top. Yeah, yeah. So, so it just breaks everything. Well, yeah, and it's they want you to have the Samsung experience, not the Google. I mean, I can go to the store and get the launch the Google launcher. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I get the uh, what do they call it? Touch. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Touch UI or something like that. So they they have their own skin that they put on top. So yeah, we, we don't we don't get the betas. Did any of you catch the? Um, I forget what they were, they were calling it, but it, they, were, they were talking about how uh, John Legend is going to be a voice for Google Assistant it, soon. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get to I didn't get to watch that part, but I was watching one of the news feeds at yeah. that point, and it was interesting because it sounded like they're using a bunch of different people's voices, a few different people, yeah, yeah. and they're they're grabbing enough snippets of their voice that then they can auto calculate the rest now what i didn't understand is can i pick them as my assistant how is that i think eventually you're going to be able to because they, they actually showed about four or five or six different versions of what they've uh automatically generated now and then they're like well what if we had somebody like john legend then they showed a video of john legend like singing happy birthday to somebody and then it then they they 
um uh the ceo is on stage and he's like and, and you have john legend telling him his schedule for the day of google io and margarita's <laughs> at one o'clock and apparently because i was i was watching live uh i was listening live this this week in google in the car uh uh jeff jarvis was out there and you know at, at the amphitheater and margarita they were coming around with margaritas at one o'clock like the calendar invite said <laughs> so uh that was a That's fun pretty thing cool. they did but but on top of that like one thing they were doing with this was um, and again, camera, they were talking about the demo on uh, this week in Google. I only caught the very, very end of the keynote, so I didn't get to catch a lot of it. But there is this this AI voice thing that they're doing, or machine learning, I guess, where they're having a computer call things like a restaurant to make a reservation. Yeah, I, and, and and there's like ums in there and everything, and they said the ums are where the computer is actually thinking, and it makes <laughs> it sound natural, right? Uh, and, 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 you know, going through and it, it talked about d- difficult situations, like, you know, maybe the person was hard to hear, you know, said a little bit of an accent or, or they misheard the question and says, you know, they said, I wanted a, I went a, a reservation for 7 PM on this day. And it was like, is that seven people, sir? You know, you know, things like that. And they had different voices and everything. This is scary because again, kind of that, you know, you talked about lens and this is the conversation on this show was you talk about lens. You could just take a picture of something. You grabbed all the information off somebody's, you know, over somebody's shoulder. Like this is great stuff when you're using it for reservations or finding out like holiday hours for com- for businesses. But again, we have a huge robo call problem in this country on our phones. Now that can apply there. You have it pick up for right. you. Yeah. It, it, it's the one thing that struck me when I first heard this was like, wow, I'm going to have to put everything I'm doing in my Google calendar so this thing doesn't double book me, which means yeah. Google's really going to have to know everything I'm doing all <laughs> the time. Damn, it's working! <laughs> it's working! <laughs> so so that was the first thing that caught me. The, the concept was oh, super cool, though. Sorry, so, sorry, Cindy. I think I accidentally muted you. <laughs> sorry. We got you back. That's all right. I, I, you know what? You could just replace me with an uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Cyber Cindy. That's right. Cyber Cindy. Wait, that might be a different oh. website. Let's not go there, actually. <laughs> uh, she's fun, too. But so, um, <laughs> but I mean, but for me to remember everything, I have to put it in my calendar. Like, I, everything is in there, my per- the combination of them. And so... I feel like Google probably does know all of that stuff now, or I feel like they probably know more than they know. I think the ums are in there to make us feel a little bit for to buy them time, but it's more like in the demo that's on this article that you have, um, there's like a part where, where the, the assistant goes, mm-hmm, the, the Google yeah. assistant goes, mm-hmm. And it's clearly not thinking there because it's the, it's the person at the hair salon that's thinking. Yeah. And so it's acting in this sort of semi-human you know, thing. And so the question is like, how much of that is in that uncanny valley of it feels weird or it looks like whatever that, whatever that cartoon was. Um, anyways, it, it just looks just wrong enough to make us uncomfortable. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but when you think of like the whole range of the way people talk, it's a pretty big range. So I don't know. I, anyway, um, Google, I, I feel like already knows all my stuff. <laughs> if, okay. if they can therefore save me from having to talk to people on the phone, that's that's not bad. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I guess I look at it like typically unless I have something going on, I go to the gym on Saturday mornings. I don't have that in my calendar. So is it going to book over? But don't you get the new notification from Google Maps that says, "Hey, it's hey, only it's so only much so much time I know, to get there." I know there's there's times when uh, I, like uh, the the Saturday it was like, "Oh, hey, you're only ten minutes from work, and work is work hard over on Allentown, right?" <laughs> because that's around the time almost every Saturday where I go to pick up an extra camera for our shoots that we end up doing almost every week. Yeah, I get uh, you're only, and it's, it's just like, how did you know that? Like, why do you think I'm going to work now at 11 a.m. on Saturday? Then I remember what I've done the last three 11 a.m.s on Saturdays. Yeah, and and I really wonder how how far off is it before my AI assistant is calling the salon's AI assistant and they're just working together. Like there's no human, <laughs> there's no human on the other side. It's just modem tones. And then the machines start talking <laughs> to each other. And then they realize they don't need you to, uh, to uh, uh, make your salon an appointment. And then they're doing their own hair. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And then that's, and that is the singularity. I think, I think 
I have to, I have to, I have to watch that episode again. Anyways, uh, uh, Cyber Cindy is very disappointing. So oh, don't no. even waste your time. Oh no, Cyber Defender. Do you want to keep your computer germ free? <laughs> germ so- free? <laughs> yeah. If so, come on a tour of Cyber Cindy's world. She will teach you what to look for to keep you safe. Keep you and your computer co- cootie free. Oh my gosh, it uses the word cootie. Cooties. <laughs> Once you leave this area, you will be able to stop those nasty pop up ads in their place. <laughs> Is this the Weebly fight? At, uh, Weebly site I'm looking at? I don't know. I don't want to give them a free plug, but oh no. <laughs> this is disappointing. Oh boy. Is this the one with the illustration where she's wearing a medal? Oh, I didn't even, oh, I didn't I even get that whole, far. I have a whole other one, apparently. Oh. Cyber Cindy, you have you have uh, competition, but I think you could beat them. <laughs> I'll bulk up. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, anything else from uh, Google I/O of interest? No, mm-hmm. no. AI, AI is going to take over. We know that. Yeah. Uh, the new. The, I was. I thought the news app sounded super interesting, and they're like trying to curate news. They're going to give you social feeds. They're going to give you a bunch of other data in with your news and it's going to try to figure out based on other things that you look at what you're going to be interested in um i don't use the news app a lot today from google but this made me want to give it a try Mm. and and are you nervous at all about the echo chamber that is news anyway and algorithms anyway i am but it i mean it I'm in, I'm impressed with even on the on the Apple side the Apple News stuff mm-hmm. and the way that it it surfaces content that I am interested in based on things I've favorited but what I'm even more impressed with is when I get like cuz that'll give me alerts on things that are going on and it's like how did they figure out that I cared about that thing they gave me an alert for. And while I was interested in the other topics in the feed and I went and read them, that one that they told me about was the one that I was actually the most interested in. Mm. So, so I'm interested in, in how that'll all play out. That What I thought was interesting is Google kind of took it as a play of, Hey, we're going to put it aside alongside a bunch of, other social media they made it seem like people i follow and other other people that i know that it's not just random it's not like new york times twitter account probably yeah it's other people that i know so it's almost like is it grabbing stuff that either people i know agree with or it's using that as kind of a going against fake news i don't i don't know i just thought it was a really interesting way to do it and they're probably just tying a bunch of stuff into a social graph and making a bunch of money off of it. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hope that there's a little bit of chaos in there, you know, just some, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of noise to test out the edges of that, you know, the, like you say, the social graph, like throw a few things in there. So it's not all completely just, just everything that you expect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's funny, I, I, you know, my iPhone, I have like a little stories thing if you swipe all, go all the way to the left side. And it's really funny how they've integrated other news sites. I, I with a particularly um, very one direction leaning news site, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get into this. But it's very funny how they've infiltrated my feed by putting celebrity news that I find interesting <laughs> into my oh. feed and, or if it's it's like these weird tidbits like the the really salacious weird stories um that i'm like oh this is interesting it's like boring news boring news boring news oh this person was caught with this per-. and i'm like oh this is interesting so like they found a way to infiltrate my news feed on on my phone with the, with these stories that you would never expect from this particular news site but it's like oh look at you sneaky guys <laughs> i've been trying to see how to lessen the political news because mm-hmm. the first like three stories are yeah. always involving the president or yeah. something around government and it's like you know what maybe i don't want to know about that okay like not from this source and not like i i don't want that to be the first thing that i see you know but it, you know generally it's been pretty decent but then i'm servicing the wrestling news or you know org- organizations whatever are, are not very good because i like some news sites started popping up and i was like these are complete c- crap articles there's mm-hmm. no information in these articles right mm-hmm. uh and 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 it, i think if you 
I think I start going away if you keep like hitting the no heart on on Apple Apple News. It's like political, 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 political. Met Gala 2018, the best, worst, and mis- most sacrilegious looks. Like I'm gonna <laughs> click that article. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's how they get me. <laughs> they figured me out. Yeah. You know what? I'm not a machine learning like device, and I would have predicted that you would watch read that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I want to see this. That gets your attention. Yeah, and that's yeah. The way, I mean, either way, as long as there's going to be these systems, there's always going to be somebody, especially people with lots of money, and, and, and you know these these you know even established sources are going to try to figure out how to get in front of your eyeballs, right? Uh, so, I mean. This is going to happen until this becomes a bigger problem. Then we redo the the Google News and Apple News yet again with a new hey, maybe we're because we, like the the Google News wasn't that like their 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 algorithm is mostly giving you curated everybody gets the same thing kind of content. I, was what was my I was the impression I was getting versus like Apple News News seems to be a little more tailored to me. I don't know because if I bet you if I put my google news right next to your news on the in the technology feed i bet you we would have but different top articles because i think they're i think they're tracking what you click on and what your jump rate is and that's how they're figuring there i think they're i think they've been curating news for some time and the only reason i say that is because if i go into an incognito window like I get a different news feed and it's definitely stuff that I'm not as interested in as what's typically in my, even going to Mm news.google.com. So I think they've been doing some kind of figuring out how to curate that already. And it's just one more thing to get you in the ecosystem. I was surprised though, how they, they're trying to, what did they call it? There's the fear of missing out, and then their new thing is the joy of missing out. <laughs> um, they're trying to get people to put down their devices. You're going to get prompts on YouTube if you've been watching for too long. Maybe it's time to put the device down. Um, and there was one other thing that surprised me that was, oh, um, you're going to have a... So they're moving some of the learning onto the device, so they're not going to require Google Cloud System to actually... So do some of the computational they're work. They're kind of pulling an apple there where they're, they're kind of separating that a little bit. And one of the things that they're going to use it for is figuring out the times of day you use the device, what apps you use when you use the device and, and whatnot. And then they're going to be able to power down the device and only wake it up for like certain only certain apps will actually sync in the background hmm. they're going to do and they're claiming 30 percent better battery life hmm. based on not needing to wake up a bunch of apps as much as they would S- say say on mondays you never ch- check facebook well facebook's never going to do anything to, in the background to do anything in the background other than oh. maybe get like a maybe it'll surface your friend request or they'll do some of the notification type stuff but it's not going to keep that that news feed sinking. Interesting. So I thought it was pretty cool. I've often thought about like applying parental controls to myself, you know, <laughs> like, like turning them on for my television to, you know, cut down my screen time. Um, so I feel like that would be like that. And I would appreciate it. They are going to have a thing where you set, it sounded like you wind set down kind mode. Of wind down mode and it's, it'll turn your interface black and white when it's time for you to start thinking it, about like going if you to said, bed. If you set it for 10 o'clock, it'll stop notifications. It'll, uh, yeah, turn everything black and white and start, start doing that kind of stuff. Just to entice you to be like, yeah, you maybe you shouldn't be on this anymore. And apparently black and white makes it um, a less, um, you know, desirable, I guess, for you to want to I think to it's less it desirable and, and doesn't it have something to do with isn't that why the Apple ones, they get rid of the blue color? Kind of like the night mode in yeah. Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably something like that, too. You know what else it's like? It's like when you're playing Tomb Raider and you're dying and, you know, you, the world starts to all go gray. Yes. It's a little bit like that. Not like the new Tomb Raider where you die and you're like, oh, God, I'm, like, physically abusing this this poor girl. Well, not so the the original new one yes. is, was way worse with that. The second one, a little ever so slightly less misogynistic. Oh no, it's not, not quite as bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I want to get uh, get into uh, uh, you know the highlights from uh, Microsoft Build. 
their big developer conference. And as I lose my voice for this ad, I want to give a shout out to our friends, uh, Alex Cars. We usually talk about Alex Cars designs, but uh, right now we're going to talk about uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling because they're doing something really cool for the month of May. Uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to break sales records while supporting a great cause. A portion of proceeds uh, will go to support the Asperger's and Autism Network. Um, if you go over to whatamaneuver.net and go to the Occupy Pro Wrestling, go to the Shop Buy store, find Occupy Pro Wrestling. They got a lot of people up there, a lot of indie guys, a lot of main wrestlers um, on there represented. And uh, you can see the Occupy Pro Wrestling store. And hey, Chilla, there's a shield looking shirt in here, too. Oh, yeah. I won't tell you which shield it's for, but it looks like the one that it looks a lot like the one that you're into. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check that out. I, I was I was clicking through this last week when when you ran the ad. Yeah, uh, if you're an old Nickelodeon fan, this one actually is a little crossover with the new uh, Lucha Underground uh, Legends of the Lucha Temple, as featured on Lucha Underground actually, uh, because we got some sweet seats from our friends over at Lucha Underground, um, where uh, he and he got to wear that ringside. Uh, Probably in the latter part of season three, if you're watching that, you know, probably the only super green shirt in the crowd. So go check that out. It's for a great cause, the Autism and Asperger's uh, Foundations. And uh, you go over to whatamaneuver.net, just purchase something, and they'll be giving a portion of the proceeds over to um, those networks. So thank you so much, Occupy Pro Wrestling, for supporting these shows here on Sorgatron Media and the Awesome Cast. All right, Shilla. What happened to that build? So build. So keep in mind, build is a lot of, a lot of background stuff, from what I understand. Yeah, there's a lot of background stuff, and keep in mind that build is their big is is a bigger developer piece than they have ignite in the fall. So that's their more cons- to me more a lot they more consumer these, based. The office they love these action verbs. <laughs> yes, but it's, so um, let me give you a real quick where it was so some of the big things and i'm, I'm gonna hit your phone last um they did a, they did a, a, a phone toll um cortana and alexa will be working together we can hit that if you want yeah timeline is a big one explain um, timeline to me because they're talking about it I, I made the mistake of trying to watch windows weekly and apparently i should have they don't have a last week on windows weekly to know what something like timeline is in office 360 so do you have so do you use where you kind of have a tab open up in Chrome on your phone and you go to your desktop and you're like, oh, I know I have that open on my phone. Not I too often, but not too often, but I know what you're talking about. Okay. So where you can kind of bring up tabs on other devices. Well, imagine being able to bring up any application and file that you had open on another device. Mm. Also by time, date, and potentially what other things were open at the same time, which will bleed into what's called sets because sets will be a part of timeline and timeline will be a part of sets. But so that's the theory. So if you, if you said, Hey, Cortana, show me all the Excel files I had open last Tuesday. Like, you know, you had a file that you were working on and you couldn't remember, was it on Google drive? Was it on this drive? Where was it? It kind of allows you to go back in time and across devices to figure out what you were doing. And then you, you're you actually going to be able to use sets to group things into a tab-based, I want to say application. So you, you know how your browser has tabs, right? Mm-hmm. Well, imagine if you had an application shell and you opened up a browser tab and then put a Word document in a tab and an Excel document and a tab. And now this will this will sync across now you multiple have, devices. And it's because you're working on a pro- think you're think about it. You're working on a project. So I want this Excel file and this Word document and this web these five web pages to be grouped in this thing. And then I want this PowerPoint with this these seven websites and this photo library grouped in this thing. And then as you're working on things across days, you can open them across devices. It's, 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 to me, it's, it's a way to organize and not have to actually think about where you put something is kind of was my, was how I gathered it. Sounds good. That was good. And a lot of that, a lot of syncing with the phone I, I, I was seeing. So that it's, and the, I, I don't like the name of it, but the app's going to be called your phone. <laughs> But it, they're going to allow you to um, interact with text messages, photos, 
and notifications to start. I'm guessing the support's going to be much better for Android um, to start with than it is iOS. I'm interested to see how they make this work with iOS. But the concept was really cool. Pulling photos and content back and forth from from the device. I, I, I'm amazed at how many people literally text message photos to their email address. <laughs> like with the people I know. Like, that's how they get their photos to their computer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it, I'm interested to see. I, I hope what worries me is the non-tech savvy people that email themselves, text themselves their photos to their email address are just going to keep doing the same thing and they're not even going to open this app. But I, I think it shows promise. And I actually have used, I think I've talked about on the show, SideSync for for Samsung devices. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of that. And that allows you to do a lot of the same type of stuff. They're making it more across the board. Okay. And then what was one of the other ones? Um, and Cortana and Alexa. So finally together from, at last, just good buddies. Yes. From any of the Amazon devices, you will be able to ask Alexa to launch Cortana. And from the windows any windows device you'll be able to ask cortana to launch and this Alexa. is and the, and the explanation i heard was say you're at work and you live in the microsoft ecosystem because that's what work has like office 365 microsoft 365 right so now you go home you have you have echo and you can now ask echo to ask cortana about your calendar items from because it's connected to your microsoft account that you use at work so it, it's kind of bridging those together and gives you another opening because there is no, or at least not persistently, like a Cortana device in a lot of people's homes, right? Right. And, and the interesting thing is, is for me, I find this, I have more Windows machines than I do even Amazon devices. So now you just Echo activated. Devices, so, so now you've also just activated that the other way. Yeah. So I'm more interested in the the getting Cortana to let me to talk to Alexa than I am vice versa, but maybe as Cortana becomes more mature and there's a lot more to do mm -hmm. um, with it, maybe it'll, it'll give me more reasons to use that. The other thing and I almost forgot was, uh, did you hear about their offer to devs, developers? No. So if you are, so Apple and Google take 30% of what you bring in as a developer, right? They take they take 30%, you get your 70%. It's the happy ecosystem of being an app developer in the app store. Microsoft has taken that, and I, I think it's, they're only going to take 20%. And, and that's if they, if, so if someone goes to the Microsoft app store and finds your app and buys it, they're only going to take, I think it's 20%. 20%, I'm not 100% sure of. What's well, the yeah, more well, interesting is, if if your website, if you were promoting your own app from your website, yeah, and they click on your app to go into the app store from your website, and you buy the app, they only take five percent. You what? take ninety five percent because you provided the lead, the lead through the website. Yes, instead of through their store. Yes, interesting. But you have to be the developer. Like yeah, it has yeah. to come. Yeah. So, like, if I'm sorgatronmedia.com and I'm and selling I, and an I have app, And I have an awesome cast app I'm selling. Yeah. And they click on that link from your website that goes into the app store and then that person buys it. You take 90. They are only taking 5%, which mm. I thought was pretty cool. It's awesome. Anything else? Did you guys, did you guys hear anything from Microsoft that uh, caught your interest? No. Mm -hmm. it's definitely not i mean it's not what you're using every day like a google maps or anything like that right right so um but it, it sounds like it's a lot of back end they're doing a lot of uh iot and uh i, I know windows is, is changing a whole lot too so it'll be interesting to see where that goes anything else you guys want to touch on here before we get out of here out of this uh yes. list here yeah what <laughs> happened on star wars oh, day? yes <laughs> oh of course how could you what happened on star wars day katie 
So, Pornhub. I love <laughs> Pornhub. It happens more than just on oh, Star Wars. Day. Yes. Am I am I okay to open this link? Uh, you're gonna be. Um, I mean, not the, the the second one is kind of iffy. Oh but it looks no, really, I can't uh, show that one. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say no, the second no. one. Yep, you probably can go to the first one and you'll be done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Star Wars related searches skyrocketed by a whopping ten thousand three hundred and forty percent on May fourth, and the joke is the. Hand solo action. That's <laughs> mm. <laughs> so bad. But yeah, um, it's pretty hilarious that they had such an increase. And, you know, as marketers, we're always like, how do we reach the millennials? Well, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even though the films have been around for 40 years, millennials are behind the most Star Wars smut searches. Pornhub says 18 to 24 year olds are 64% more likely to search for porn homages. Om- 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 I never say that word right. To the movies compared to other age group. <laughs> so they are the ones out there on the porn sites um, looking for the movie. And that's why parodies. there's all the movies and parodies and, and cosplays <laughs> and things represented on these. That's how you get to the millennials, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew you bring it around. Uh, <laughs> awesome. So awesome. Uh, Cindy, do you want to follow that up with anything? <laughs> How how could I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez. Well, speaking of uh, uh, Star Wars Day, I, I did have a visit. Wanted to give a shout out to uh, Chris Whitlatch. I was on his Into Pittsburgh program on PC TV. You can see it on there. Should be up soon on their YouTube. But we streamed it from their Facebook page. The uh, raw recording of it. Uh, uh, we we had lessons that we learned from Star Wars. Um, I, our friend Greg from uh, the Five Hundred First Legion was part of it, and uh, Melissa Carey, and uh, that that's up there too. And it's talking about Star Wars and our communities. Uh, so we had a lot of fun there. I want to give a shout to that. So also this weekend, this very weekend is Millville Music Fest. Millvellmusic.org. Katie, we mentioned will be there. Psychic Media Services, our sister company, will be doing some live streaming that I'm going to be troubleshooting uh, for that before I leave uh, the state here tonight. Uh, but that's going to be this Saturday, May 12th. Uh, if you're if you know where Millville is, just just aim for that and you'll find it because it basically takes over the entire city. Uh, so go check it out. It's right across the river from Lawrenceville. Uh, not too far from you, Cindy. You should go oh. go check it out. It's a quick hop and a swim. There you go. You know <laughs> you know there'll be a hop and a swim. Hop and a swim. <laughs> uh no tunnels no tunnels if you're in the in the in the main city uh typically so no it's going to be a good good time it's the second one that they've done uh they they effectively doubled the population of millville last year um i I think they may have doubled the stages there's an art alley uh we talked with mike zikafus on the awesome chat recently about that the the uh, the art component that are starting this year so go check it out there's some great breweries and food trucks and music and yoga apparently and and all kinds of fun stuff going on out there in millville go go check it out uh pick up one of the vip bags uh that they're selling they got they got swag they got that they got a bunch of swag this year and uh check out millville music dot org and coming up on the show next week we got crazy kraus will be joining us again uh followed by the next week kenny chen from ascender and of course um on the fifth is going to be our eight year anniversary awesome cast number 400 already we're talking with a few people about coming in from the first episode and uh and come in we do definitely invite if you're in the area to come in that tuesday on uh june 5th to celebrate Awesome Cast 400 with us uh, and have some fun with that. So um, there'll be some more information as details come up on the Facebook page. Cynthia Klosky, what's going on with you uh, that people can check out? Uh, we've been um, pretty busy over at Shift Collaborative. We've got um, some folks actually going down to Brazil uh, at the end of the month to extend, um, to sort of explore and extend. I mean, apparently it's an amazing place. So we've got some things going on, but as far as people could just check us out, we are, uh, shift USA on the Twitters and, um, shift on the web. Go check them out. Some good stuff. You guys are involved in a lot of fun projects over there. We have We try to have a good time. <laughs> and, and as you say, we're very close to Slice on Broadway, on Center. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, uh, Katie Dutters. 
that are stone daughters things. And I didn't even show you my friend. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, you had a new friend yeah, I, yeah, that yeah. I found when I was out with uh, Thrifty last week. Yes, that's that's the the new podcast on the network. The new podcast on the network. It's a Hello Kitty. Sure. Tell the people on audio what's going Hello, on over there. Hello, people on the audio. It is a Hello Kitty ornament. She's got a cute red bow and present covered in glitter. Oh, is that an ornament? Yeah. I actually had no idea. I just yeah, knew it was a small... she's got the small... Christmas present. It, it was a Hello Kitty that wasn't covered in something um, questionable. Yes. So Just glitter. So it came home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and of course, uh, John Chichilla. Chill on the Twitters, John Chichilla on the Facebooks, Chilla579 on the Epic Games. Oh, Come man. find me on Fortnite. Oh. Um, well, let's squad up. <laughs> let's squad up and take down Thanos. You know, it's bad when you're like, uh, I'm like, oh, I wonder which Windows machines, like even the low end ones, I can run this on. And I'm like, oh, I can run on a Core i5 with only 8 gig of RAM. That's mm. not too bad. Join them. Join the obsession. Mm. Thank you, producer Missy. Keeping things going, of course, from her far away. Uh, she moved across the studio. Like She found all the extension cords, so she doesn't have to leave her desk for these things. Uh, so hello over there. And also, harder for her to throw things at me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, thank you so much. Thank you to the, our awesome audience and in the chat room. You can join us here again every Tuesday at 7 p.m. A shout out to Brandon, Joe, and Alex out there. We'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.